The first thing I wanted to show you before we get into any individual devices and technique was Reason's console. Now it's a bit of a monster, and if you're not used to really large analog desks, it may be a bit overwhelming to look at when you first load the application up. We can scroll through the entire console and the entire channel strip by going up and down in this section. And it's a really useful way of quickly getting to different areas of the mixer. And you can see it's a bit of a monster. Now, I've got 40 plus tracks loaded here, so it's gonna look quite complex, but realistically, all you need to know is one of these channel strips, and then you can understand the whole mixer. Reason will only create as many tracks as you're using. So if you've only got three audio tracks, you're only gonna have three of these channel strips. As I've got 40 plus audio tracks, I've got 40 plus channel strips. But don't worry too much about this mix looking overly complicated. Yours may look a lot simpler when you get going. You can see starting from the bottom, we've got a fader, we've got a pan area, we've got effects sends, we've got insert controls, we've got a whole EQ section with filters, we've got a dynamic section which features a compressor and a gate on every channel. And at the top here, we've got some routing options and a gain control. At the end, we've got a master fader with a master bus compressor, master effects send and return controls, master insert controls, and a master fader with control room settings, and also some shortcuts across the bottom here. Now I'm gonna go through every single one of these separate sections in upcoming lessons. But next, I'm gonna take a look at the relationship between this huge console and Reason's rack system.